The year is 1914. The European subcontinent is embroiled in bloody trench warfare. Soldiers on all sides are victims to artillery fire, mustard gas, and new automatic rifles. Their biggest enemy, however, is infection. Of those wounded in battle, few will survive even their minor injuries. Field hospitals populate the front lines, with young doctors and nurses working day and night to stem the stealthy killer. Their main defense is antiseptic, which proves just as lethal to the patients as no treatment at all. One frustrated young doctor called Alexander Fleming is unwilling to accept the inefficacy of current medicine to rescue the wounded in battle. He would later dedicate his life to understanding and fighting infections, going on to pioneer one of the most influential medical discoveries of the 20th century, a discovery which Time magazine claims has altered the course of history. Fleming was born in Ayrshire, Scotland, to a farming family. He performed well at school, later moving to London to attend the Royal Polytechnic Institution, after which he took to working in a local shipping office. Fleming would work there for a subsequent four years until receiving a fortuitous inheritance from his uncle that would see him through St. Mary's Hospital Medical School. It was this medical training which would later take Fleming to the front lines as a captain in the Royal Army Medical Corps, where he would gain first-hand knowledge of the perils of treating soldiers in battle. Before the outbreak of the First World War, Fleming had become assistant bacteriologist to Sir Almroth Wright, a pre-eminent scientist in the fields of bacteriology and immunology. His stay at the university was extended only at the insistence of the president of its rifling club, of which Fleming was a member. To remain active, Fleming took up the research position under Almroth in the immunology department. Unfortunately, Fleming's work was derailed when Britain joined the war effort on the 4th of August in 1914. By the conflict's close, Fleming had witnessed the need for a replacement to the ineffective and deadly antiseptics in use. Upon his return from the service, he resumed his position at St. Mary's, and with strong support from Wright, he dedicated much of his time to studying the effects of antiseptics and their unintended lethality in the war effort. A major breakthrough in his work came in the form of the discovery of lysozyme in human mucus. This naturally occurring agent protects the human immune system from certain common bacteria. By 1928, Fleming had been appointed Professor of Bacteriology at the University of London, leading research on common bacteria such as the Staphylococci, which may be found on household surfaces. Ironically, it was the somewhat undesirable trait of Fleming's untidiness which would ultimately modernize the human effort against disease. Upon his return from a month-long holiday, Fleming found in his lab a petri dish, upon which a fungus had grown. The dish contained a Staphylococcus culture, but around the mold growth, he found that all the bacteria had died off. His former assistant Merlin Price prompted Fleming to investigate the growth, reminding him of the lysozyme discovery. Of the occasion, Fleming later said, When I woke up, Just after dawn on September 28th, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all of medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic or bacteria killer. But I suppose that was exactly what I did. Within just a few short months, Fleming had managed to grow pure samples of the fungus and extracted a mold juice which his experiments showed to kill off an array of various bacteria. Fleming understood then the significance of his discovery and shared it with the medical world. In convention with its genus, he named the agent penicillin.